Ball Rocket Podcast, episode 16 for April 11th, 2016. I am your host, Warp Jester. This episode is brought to you by the wonderful Patreons over at patreon.com slash Gaming. Welcome, everybody. Uh, how you doing this wonderful, wonderful day? Uh, as you can already hear, I am not exactly in the best of health, so a couple of disclaimers are out the top. First of all, my apologies. I am still trying to recover from whatever hell have, I have caught from my family. When you have kids, they take simple little things, they mutate it, they give it back to you, and it gets ugly. Um, also, uh, we actually are using new software. We've, I've uh, changed over. I used to use the OBS Studios, uh, or sorry, OBS, uh, whatever it is, Broadcaster. I'm not using mm-hmm. OBS Studios. So I'll be uh, trying to fiddle with that while we're watching here. So I apologize if there's any technical difficulties. Uh, today, I've got a special guest. And uh, again, as particular of uh, most BRGers, uh, he is kind of special. Uh, Ziploc Bob. Howdy, howdy. So Ziploc, actually, uh, he's one of the uh, uh, hosts on um, Minus the Rumors. We've had uh, uh, Zero and uh, Crimson on before. Um, so I always encourage you guys to go check them out. And also, uh, Zip, you also do um, uh, your own thing, which is uh, uh, Syndrome. Sequel Syndrome, yes. Yeah, Sequel Syndrome. Yes, because I'm a fan of alliteration. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a, as you can see, I've... Uh, I'm a fan of comics and, you know, Peter Parker, Peter Parker, all the alliteration in there. Of course, I'm going to fall in love with it. Of course. But, and, and, you know, it sticks in your mind. Hopefully, they'll, they'll, they don't confuse it with the other SS, but this is the internet, so. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> welcome, to, welcome to the wonderful world of the internet. Anyways, guys, uh, today we're going to be uh, talking about a fun topic here that's going to be the uh, psychology's guide to uh, buying the right game. It's a really interesting topic where we talk, diving into kind of the, the idea and the uh, psychology behind games and where you fit in games. So you can buy the game that actually fits you best. But first, the news. Okay. Well, I've got a change of pace for you guys. And this is going to be a fun one. We actually are not going to talk about layoffs this time. Hooray! Yes, people are keeping their jobs. <laughs> uh, but we are going to talk about those uh, is, is another uh, semi-recurring topic that I do enjoy, which is asinine and retarded trademark attempts. And this time, it's actually <laughs> ben, it's actually Bandai Namco. Uh, this time, it, 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 it actually this is this is a creme de la creme. So we've we've talked about. Sony and their attempts to do a retarded trademark, um, as well as the Fine Brothers trying to trademark um, um, reaction videos. And uh, that's all kinds of fun. This is a special one because uh, Namco is actually trying to trademark finishing move. It, well, to be more accurate, they're actually trying to trademark the, the Japanese word that's finishing move or finish him kind of... Uh, you're not even gonna try at this one. Are oh you? hell no! <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh, I, 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 I don't. Should I myself on your show for you? Uh, go for it. Uh, I, I, I typed it out phonetically, and I do not speak Japanese. Oh, you're smarter than I am. Anime, but I'm not <laughs> even a huge. I'm not like a weebu or anything. So, oh boy, uh, Hatsuwatsa. Hatsuwatsa. <laughs> I think that's, I, that sounds Hatsu pretty Watsa. accurate. <laughs> But anyways, uh, yeah. So they're trying. They're trying to trademark the, the, this term, um, and it, it hasn't exactly gone well. And people have already started blowing up on the uh, interwebs about it. Um, the, the 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 funny thing about this trademark versus the other ones is they're kind of going broad spectrum here. And, and, and at least with like Sony, they were being very specific of trying to trademark Let's Play for games. Yeah. Namco, not so much. They're saying uh, we're going to trademark the the finishing move across twenty eight different categories, including games, slot machines, and fishing equipment. In air quotes. <laughs> now they're, they're okay. Just... They're doing the spaghetti method. <laughs> it's like throw it on the wall, see what sticks. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> if you're a little bit delusional, you'll see a spaghetti monster. All hell, the spaghetti monster. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I'm I'm a little bit perplexed by this, and I'm wondering how this is going to go. Now, the 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 the, the quasi funny thing about this that Bob has had pointed out, this is not their first actually first success 
uh, at making a, a, a kind of broad spectrum uh, uh, trademark, is it? No. Um, back in 1996, so they've owned this, they've owned the trademark to this word for 20 years. Um, yeah, the 90s was 20 years ago. Wow. <laughs> hey, hey, what trademark uh, is this? The word for the word killer. Yeah. So killer instinct. Uh, <laughs> um. No, wait, no, Killer Instinct was made by Rare. So how did Rare not get hit? Easy, because they're not complete a-holes about it. It's the only reason. Well, maybe the case, I don't know. But yeah, so I mean, yeah. It, it's kind of, uh, it's I, kind I'm of broad not... spectrum, but yeah, it, it's a little bit off in my book. And I, mean, I understand, because uh, you have to keep in mind that, that Bandai Namco is uh, a, a large company with a lot of diverse things. And the, the, the uh, Namco is kind of their gaming arm. So you have a lot of games out by Namco. Mm -hmm. That explains the games. Uh, Bandai themselves do anime and toys. Toys primarily is a big thing for them. And um, other electronic entertainment, like slot machines. Yeah, like their, their, their fishing slot machine, hence the gaming and fishing equipment. Um, <laughs> Here's my question. If you get a jackpot, pot, do you get a freshly caught salmon? <laughs> <laughs> It's like, yes, I can't, I can't feed my family. Oh, God. I'm just, I, I know, like, slot machines, there's, there's science to the sounds of coins coming into a metal tray to try. I'm just trying to imagine the sound of, of a salmon just flapping into the thing. All right. Just, just, anyway, basically, they're, they're trying to do this to, to protect themselves. Well, the, the thing they kind of point out is they, they want to protect themselves from, from basically Chinese knockoffs. Now, I don't know about you, but last time I checked, it doesn't seem like anything in China really gives a crap about trademark, copyright, or anything else for that matter. And the proof yeah. in there is all the uh, clone iPhones and, and Samsung devices. But hey, um, but this is this is a fine example of of these type of, of uh, laws being used more as a sword than a shield. Uh, yeah. It's the best way to describe it. And it, actually, I, I don't take credit for that. That was actually from the No. Um, which is a great uh, YouTube channel you should check out if you want to get some gaming news on the quick. Um, but yeah, it's just it, it, it's typical. It's it's them taking advantage of uh, of law. Yeah, and like here's the thing: it's in Japan, and their trademark laws are different from American trademark laws. So I can't do a one to one. But like, say Apple. That's a that's a word word, word to trademark. But the company Apple has a trademark that for Apple computers, but you couldn't trademark Apple brand apples because you know, Apple, Apple? no, you can't trademark app a company that sells apples as Apple. You can't make Apple brand apples. If that makes sense. Yeah, I'll make um, pair of brand ba apples. Ba basically it's, yeah, that's perfectly fine. You can't have something that's descriptive of the service or product that you're giving. There you go. Well, uh, on the bright side, though, at least uh, Japan's not the only ones kind of doing their loopy things. Uh, we've actually, in the Americas, have our own loopy issues, namely in our government. Yeah, isn't there was one guy that does this thing I'm doing right now? <laughs> 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 He's a special Con guy. guy. Uh -huh. Well, uh, okay. Congress, there's a congressman uh, by the name of Duncan Hunter. You might have heard of him before. He's the one that vaped while he was talking about vaping and was legislating, which to me was just awesome. Like, and people that were like, <laughs> oh no, he's vaping. I'm like, shut up. Back in the day, day people used to like smoke cigars and while they're legislating. I don't want to hear a dang thing. <laughs> but the, the vaping is not, not the, even the focus of this particular thing. Oh no, it's gaming related because apparently... <clears throat> his son, allegedly, that's who he's blaming right now, has made $1,302 worth of campaign credit that he spent on Steam games <laughs> via 68 separate transaction. Now, the actual breakdown is some of them are solid numbers, like $5, 5.00 USD. It's not that weird stuff that you usually get with Steam, where it's like four ninety nine and uh, three eighty seven and sixty eight twenty two, and like these weird numbers because of taxes or because of Steam sales. No, 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 no. So this is just my theory, my opinion. I think that he's 
that the, if it was him, he spent some money on CSGO packs and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all I'm going to say is I, I, I can really honestly see that he yeah, was probably a son. And we, 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 we've seen numerous stories in, in, in the news in the past about kids getting a hold of either their credit, parents' credit card or just having in-game purchases that end up uh-huh. adding up and the parents will realize it. And that's the case, then, yeah, he's just, he's just another Joe regardless of what his station is. They got bit that way. That said, yeah. if, if this guy actually spent money on, on this many games, uh, more power too. We got cognizance as a gamer. <laughs> yeah, right? But there's one thing I would like to point out that I haven't seen anybody who covers this look at it at this angle. Is that in the EU, uh, a couple years ago, they did a bunch of regulation on like how free-to-play can be marketed to where it's not targeting kids. But, you know, the people... That's not how it works at all. It, the whales are usually the whales to people who spend like thousands of dollars on a free to play game. They're usually in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, but oh well, right? <laughs> so I wonder if because this happens, we start seeing some of those same regulations happening over here. I wouldn't doubt it. Well, and nonetheless, <laughs> like I say, if he is a gamer, more power to him, but. Uh... I mean, he might as well stock up now because at least these are games he can play, but there is uh, at least one type of game he's not going to be able to play. Well, you know, he just got through shutting down that, that and Blizzard just got through shutting down a, fan, a bunch of uh, fans running a vanilla server of WoW. Oops! Uh, what really got them busted is that, yes, there are other services that make servers of games that are, that are MMOs that are long since dead, but... Those guys aren't making money off anymore, so they don't care, or the companies are defunct. Mm-hmm. Blizzard still exists, and they're still making money. So they, the lawyers in both the U.S. and Fran- France that are in Blizzard's pocket just gave them a cease and desist, and they're adhering to it, and they have a limited time up until April 10th, which would be the day before this actually airs, to do so. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I I feel for them. I mean, the fact of the matter is, it, I I appreciate and and and, and can uh, appeal to the senses in terms of they're they're running a vanilla server. This is this is a segment that Blizzard isn't doing. They they've shown yeah. no inkling or interest to have a vanilla server. There's been rumors back and forth, but it's always been rumors. Blizzard's never said anything officially. That said, this is blatantly Blizzard's IP that they're mm-hmm. ripping off. So it is. It, it's it's straight up piracy, and Blizzard has every right to do this. It sucks, and yeah. I think ultimately they're gonna end up kind of pissing off their fan base. But again, even to that point, is this their fan base? Yeah. No. But there is one point better on this, though. Mm. They're taking all the you know the zeros and ones and stuff, and just putting it out into ether for everybody to enjoy now. So you can now make your own. Wouldn't suggest it because you'll get hit by a lawyer, but the information's now out there for you to do it. And if you do, whatever happens to you is completely on you. Yeah, pretty much. To that end, though, speaking of piracy, I gotta love, gotta love these guys. (laughs) So Quantum Break is a new game that came out. It's kind of an interesting game. I haven't personally played, but I've watched a little bit of the gameplay video. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) it's got some interesting toes to it. But uh, it it and, and good fun and good personality, um, the uh, the makers of Quantum Break actually have a good sense of humor. And so for the uh, people who have pirated the game, they're giving them a custom skin to say. <laughs> it's like thank you for being interested in our game, but please buy our crap. <laughs> the people who are playing the pirated copy of uh, Quantum Break will actually get a character with the pirate patch <laughs> over his eye. <laughs> so I almost want to see if someone downloads the pirated copy just to let us play the pirate. <laughs> well, funny thing, actually. Uh, there's actually been reports from people who have legitimate copies of the game who are getting hit by this, uh, and they're complaining. And, and uh, our, uh, Remedy has actually responded by saying, it's simply an issue with your connectivity. You just got to basically reconnect to the servers, and you'll be fine. So supposedly, if you uh, basically... This, this is one of those games that you have to kind of be connected to play, even if it's not an online game. Well, I, that's a whole other conversation for a whole other day. But nonetheless, yeah. if you really want to see a pirate patch, Keep unplug your computer, I guess. <laughs> if you get if you get in in on that one, 
that one with me. We'll be here for two hours instead of just one. <laughs> and the only, thing, the only thing I can really see this like buying, you know, anybody's really going to give a crap if they've got to bite them in the ass would be anybody who who actually, for whatever reason, is going to pirate this game and actually do a let's play on it because it'd be kind of blatant by buying it. Um, that said, though, uh, at least there are, uh, uh, some games are actually being a little more cognitive to uh, people who do Let's Plays and streams. Well, at least it's not like intrusive DRM, so I'm fine with this. Um, <laughs> but speaking of trying to keep, when it comes to copyright and trying to, and Let's Plays and trying to keep your stuff from being taken down, um, there is now an option option to disable copyrighted music. Music In some or games. not now. In some games, but it's coming slowly but surely, and to disable the copyrighted music. That way, you don't get hit with a DRM, but it's not going to where or the DMCA, but it's never going to help with the false claims. But at least it's a step. It's to, they're being <sighs> cognitive of the fact that games, uh, an intrinsic intrinsic part of games nowadays for promotion and whatnot is actually people doing live streams and doing YouTube. Um, and, and, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's obviously important enough because some games are, are being cognitive and saying, here, let us have this checkbox where we can make sure that anything that's playing, we are basically saying either we own the rights to it and you can use it or, uh, you could disable it, which is really nice. And this is important because I know a couple of, uh, BRGers got bit when they didn't realize that the, uh, the music in Rocket League wasn't yeah. their own IP. And people were actually getting pinged for it, and they didn't realize that at first. So yeah, well, see, that can be actually argued two ways. That okay, yes, it's not their own IP. However, they used it in their I IP, and they like say, and let's say everything's on open up, and they bought the rights and all that good stuff, right? But they did. Theor the problem. Theoretic. No, I'm saying. Oh, no, I'm saying it's like they bought. They didn't like buy the rights, like but buy the rights to be able to use it in their game. Yeah. Well, this, right. this, this is the problem. And, and, and I wanted to point this particular story out because it's important for anybody who who is an amateur uh, uh, YouTuber or streamer or whatever. Um, it, it's worth noting that, you know, the, the way law works and contracts work, there are a lot of games out there that will contract or buy the rights to music for their game. That does not include the use of that content in other uh other things like a youtube live stream or anything like that so you gotta be very cognizant of it. so the fact that somebody's actually acknowledging this is is great like i said it, it's important because uh this is becoming a thing it's, a, it's yeah. becoming an important thing so much so that uh there's actually a, a, a streaming service or a clip service i don't know if, I'm, not, I'm not sure how to even explain this uh but it's called it's called uh plays tv Mm -hmm. This is a, a service that it's not like Twitch, it's not like a live stream uh, Twitch type thing. It's not really like YouTube. It, it's kind of like Instagram or Snapchat for video. It's, it's where you can record your video and then have little snippets of it. So you, you have that awesome. wonderful little segment where you totally whoop somebody in, in World of Warships or whatever. You can so it, capture. So it's so if in my mind I'm pit I'm picturing. Twitch, Tumblr edition. I, I, I can go that way, but uh, the the okay. play, play TV actually touts uh, massive growth. As a matter of fact, they've hit uh, was it they crossed uh, over ten million monthly active users uh, in its first year. That's a big upswing. I, I'll be honest with you, I I had not even heard anything about this until now. So it was just like out of the blue, all of a sudden here's a service I didn't even heard about. And they're already crossing that that ten million uh, uh, users. Threshold. Yeah, in, in a year's time, that's pretty damn impressive. Oh yeah, and on top of this, it's just like it's it's kind of like um like we have services that we go, oh yeah, I use that all my all the time. I have it on my phone. I have it in my blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Insert device there. Facebook came out of nowhere originally. He came out of some kid in a college dorm, then he screwed a lot of people. And well, and I wish we could put it back. <laughs> me, me too, because of all the drama. But I'm saying, like, <laughs> it's 
it, just looking at a standpoint of how ingrained it is with us nowadays and where how humble of an origins it really has, it doesn't surprise me. It's just like, oh, something new. Now I'm curious on how far does it really go. Yeah. Uh, well, this is again. This 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 is a really key thing because this is a company that dwells in this realm. This is this is this is tying into esports, and this is worth noting because, and another story from Venture Beats, esports is uh, makes up twenty one point three percent of Twitch views. Yeah, according to the mark, market researcher Newzu. New Zoo it said esports drops twenty one point three percent of viewership on on live streaming site on the live streaming site Twitch, which has grown on more than a million a hundred million views a month. Which, if I got that in my lifetime views, I would like die and go to heaven. Oh God, <laughs> yes. I mean, it look. And that's if I did that over a course of thirty years. <laughs> you, you, you can look at the breakdown in in. Uh... What dominates Twitch here, and it, it's really interesting because the, the big thing, which is no surprise, is MOBAs. Uh, things like Here's the Storm okay. and Dota, very, very popular. But uh, shooters are another very popular one, strategy games, and so on. But it, it, it's a big, big deal, and uh, they've they've gone so far as to to show you specifically some of the most popular games, StarCraft being one of them. Hooray! Because I love mm -hmm. StarCraft to death. Um, but again, if this just goes down the whole line of we're talking about a situation where um, uh, it's becoming a big thing with uh, esports being a thing now. We, we've talked yeah. about it a lot, and I've I've been really big on it. I've been really uh, hyped on it. Um, and 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 companies are are definitely cluing in. As a matter of fact, again, yeah. uh, uh, from VentureBeat, uh, they're talking about uh, uh, Face It and Twitch are launching an esports league where the teams are the owners. Esports is... is exploding, much like in the same way that first-person shooters were a few years ago, or platformers were in the early '90s, or 2D but, fighters but, were in the late '90s. But the, we're talking about that, that. We're talking about game popularity. But this is this is beyond this. This is not just a game being popular that everybody wants to play. We're not getting to the realm where people have fun sitting down and watching these games. And I mean, it. it for me, it kind of becomes as no surprise, to be honest, because, I mean, I, I can remember, oh, God, way back in, like, the late 90s, early 2000s, probably, like, early 2000s era, where I'd sit down at my friend's house and watch him play one of the early GTAs just for hours, because it was, I mean, it's like it was better than what was on TV, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, but this is, this, this particular, this particular uh, article is great because... Um, they're talking about how uh, Face is partnering with uh, gameplay live streaming site Twitch, great esports championships. And what's nice about this is they're going to start off with Counter Strike tournament, um, where participants of the teams and players will be granted co ownership of the business. And what that means is that teams are going to be granted access to revenue share and profits uh, and representation in the league. So this is not just I create a league, I, I have to fund, you know, the the computers and the hardware and everything else. And I can go to these tournaments, and if my team is good enough, I might be able to take home the purse. This is actually them saying, because you're part of the league, because you're participating, you are part of the entertainment. And as basically yeah. as a reward, if you will, you're actually going to get um, uh, a, a, a basically cut a cut in the stake. Now, I didn't I didn't read any of the details on, on how that would break down. I'm going to assume that you know, better teams may get a better cut. I don't know. I didn't say it. But the, yeah. the quote from that I love is, players and teams are the heart of eSports community and deserve the opportunity uh, to reap the rewards of their hard work and uh, uh, dedication in the growing eSports mainstream uh, phenomenon. That's, that says a lot right there. They're actually, like I said, they're, they're, they're playing is saying, we understand that you guys are entertainers. Yeah. I mean, as and, much as real, quote unquote, real sports. And even then, it's just like, Bottom line is like we understand you do your job well, you know what you're doing. Get paid. <laughs> and there's money to be made here, and we want to snatch you up before someone else does. You know, exactly. It's helping it's helping their bottom line in such an important way. But speaking of awards, ah. The BAFTA Game Award awards winners were revealed this year. 
BAFTA I'm excited is an acronym this. that I have no idea what it means anymore. Something with Brits and, <laughs> and fish and chips. I, I'm from I'm from down south, America. America. <laughs> <laughs> but for artistic achievement, so this is the game that looks pretty. Ori and the Blind Forest, and it is very pretty. It's very pretty. Oh my God, it's so they, very pretty. They, they 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 have a they have a great list and a breakdown. And, and BAFTA, just if, in case you guys don't understand, BAFTA is, is, is just like we see like the I can't remember if it's the Emmys, the Oscars, or whatever. But for the movies where they go through and they actually break every movie down by best music, best artistic directing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. You you can see the list here. Audio achievement, best games, British games, debut games, family games, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can see the list of all the guys here. Oh, yeah. It's wonderful. And, and I mean, I'm looking down the list, and, of course, I've played what? a fraction of these games. But for the ones I, I do I've know, I've heard I of at least all of them, but one of them I've just got to go, wait, what? Okay, it's just the music. I can understand that. Or it's like audio achievement and music. I can understand that because gameplay. Just actually, look up. Everybody's gone to Rapture. I've seen the articles. No I haven't actually watched there. it. <laughs> well, the the ones I'll point out that I, that I agree with, uh, and again, I'm I haven't played this one, but it's been very popular. Is Fallout Four for best game? I gotta agree. I I uh, I watched Generic B uh, when he did the playthrough of uh, Fallout Four, and I was just glued to it. Again, it, it's it's better than watching network TV. Okay, people, look at this. Look at this. Got Harley Quinn on. Yeah, I do. Right? So you know where I stand. Oh. So, now let me go ahead and sound like I'm about to contradict myself. How does the best British game get is Batman Arkham Knight? Not because it, I'm not saying, oh, it shouldn't be a British Who game. Who made no, it? Are it they British-based? It could be, and I don't care. It's That game was a travesty. Well, nonetheless... Um, In a other... lot of ways. Like, <laughs> the game, like it's PC it was... port still broken. I think they're throwing it's... them a bone. They have, they have to yeah. be a British game maker or something. I, I don't know. I, I don't At begin to know. At this point, <laughs> it's like, because, then... like, even the console versions, and like, okay, let's just look at a story point, or it's so underwhelming. Yeah, well, I'm 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 middling at best with Batman, so I I can't say much about that. Um, uh, the the one that does stand out to me that took took home a lot of awards, including family multiplayer and sports, is Rocket League. And oh my God, I cannot say this enough. Go out and buy that flipping game. It is a wonderful, wonderful game. <laughs> So, anyways, guys, check the, check the list out. And you can get the full details on them. Um, there's actually a lot of stuff in the back end and how they choose everything. You're welcome to read up on that. Of course, as always, we've got the links down there. Uh, doing a little follow-up here. I want to follow up on a couple of things. First of all, we talked about Rock Band, how uh, if the PC crowdfunding thing goes through, you'll be able to spend you know a little over two grand for all the music. That may not happen because uh, they fell <laughs> well <laughs> short of their crowdfunding. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, they were asking for 1.5 mil. Um, they got about half mast. <laughs> I think they make a pill for that, actually. But yeah, they, they, <laughs> they made uh, 792,817 dollars, and as of right now, it's unclear what this means. Are they going to move forward or not? I will say the one thing to point out: they caught a boatload of flack for this. A they lot of are a were... triple A developer. Exactly. One. And Two, they've made successful games and made Rock Band's a lot been of successful. Money. I mean, I, if, anyways, if you and this is just another and the biggest one, you know, like, and those two are really big. But the <clears> biggest <throat> one, this is just another, another AAA developer shitting on PCs. Well, you know, I, I will say one thing, and in, 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 in my defense, in my, my opinion of things, I don't, I don't look at AAA developers. Uh, negatively, if they go to crowdfunding, I'm okay with that. I, I'm all for a world where there's direct direct connection with the developers, regardless of how big they are. So I, I will give them that, but it's just it again. It did rub a lot of people the wrong way. I think that I, I think the bad media and the bad press from this is is probably going to do them worse than the money they might have made off of this. And at this point, I think the best thing they could possibly do. And it's just kind of like, okay, you know what? We're going to release this anyway and, and and do something nice for people who did donate just to cover bases on it. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's... Yeah. I'm not going to go I further mean, the with that. I mean, the first people who but... said they were going to donate, 
they ne the money never actually got withdrawn for their account, so it wasn't one of those type of horrible sites. Oh yeah, or... I mean, the, 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 these funding campaign deals, it, it's one of those you pledge and then they can pull when you hit achievement. Anyways, yeah. nonetheless, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 let's if, talk if about looking... another AAA. Like, if you're looking forward to this, ain't gonna happen. Possibly, don't know. Um, another news follow up. <laughs> we we've had this topic. You know how I feel about this, and I really want to dive into a lot deeper later. But nonetheless, uh, an update from uh, Blizzard on um, uh, the, the 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 tracer pose. It was it was too sexy. They have changed it. Um, I I will give them I will give them that this right here I think is a a far a far better look and reading into understanding who Tracer is again we talked about her being more of a fun loving cheerful cute you know adorable type of person as opposed to quote unquote sexy I think this is a, a a better take on it anyway so I think they've done good in that regard I'm really hoping this will quiet people down a little bit because I, I'm kind of overboard with all of that <laughs> to be honest with you um, so yeah so I just wanted to throw that in there real quick uh, to let people know um so Listen, yeah it's it's just an ass <laughs> <laughs> well so are you but we put up with you anyway so why can't we put up with this one <laughs> exactly where do we draw the like you're being you people are being sexist because you won't put up with a female ass but you'll put up with a male one <laughs> i'm sorry no, i had to okay. go there anyways <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna switch gears here, guys. That 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 that's the gaming news. But of course, we'll just have a little other uh, other elements on the uh, tech tidbit topic. This oh, is a fun one. Tops. Oh, we love <laughs> you right here. We love talking about it all the time. Even on the other show, we've been talking about it way too much. I'm sick of talking about copyrights, really. It's just but this one's a winner. Oh, this this is winner winner chicken dinner. This is. <laughs> Charlie Sheen Tiger Blood winner, okay? Uh, <laughs> copyright cops want size piece to use ransomware. That's how the title reads on this article. All right? So I'm not the one saying this. I'm in the clear by using calling it ransomware because at this point I'm reporting news. <laughs> so this is not slander. <laughs> this is not slander. This is not liable. This is reporting news. And if you report on someone saying that something is slanderous, you're in the clear. Oh, I'll just come out and say it. In my opinion, these guys are freaking crooks. Oh, it's definitely on the gray area of the law at the best. At the worst. Dark, this, dark at, gray. At the work, like I'm talking about, like Fifty Shades okay. of Grey, dark. But okay, let's get back into this. <laughs> so, uh, what, what is first of all, who is it? Rights Corp. Who's Rights Corp? Well, if you've heard of them, it's because well, you probably got an email from them through through your ISP saying, "Hey, you've been caught caught pirating." Shame on you. Now we want you to now we you may be liable for up to hundred and fifty thousand dollars in damages damages, but we'll settle for twenty to thirty dollars per each infringing allegation. So you're like, well, I don't have like you know that sort of money, so I can I'll pay the twenty to thirty bucks per each and I only downloaded one CD, so if they even if they do it by song, which would be ridiculous because then like the C D would cost you per, twenty per bucks. downloads of a song. Yeah. You, know, you know what this sounds yeah. like to me? I, uh, just like, opinion is observation. Yeah, that's the word. <laughs> it sounds like extortion. Now, now I'll go one step f further. Have you, have you, uh, have you ever heard of uh, Highwaymen? Yes. Yeah, to where they'll block a road. You can't pass here unless you pay the toll. That's where yeah. they're going. Yeah, except for the highway is the internet soup, the internet information highway thingy that we all use. Because <laughs> you know, I like I like my browser. I like I, I like looking at the porn. <laughs> well, here, here, so here, here's the thing. To be clear, the, the Rice Corp has been around for a while, and, and, and yeah. they're they're an advocacy group that that basically on on, on the request of or. or for like music and video industries, they'll go out and and do the, these these notices where they will say, "Hey, we're gonna basically nail you for a lot, or you can pay us a little." And apparently, that hasn't gone too well because they've they've actually reported operating losses over the past two years of multiple millions of dollars. So Fifty million dollars. 
So they, they, they have a new angle now. Yeah, so basically instead of you getting an email, you're going to get a pop-up. I mean, you're going to be like, uh, it's probably, it's, you're probably just going to go, kill it. It looks like it might be a virus, so get it off my screen and not really read it because as you do. Sure, and, you're a pirate, be warned. And you do, so let's say if you do it one torrent, I'm not a repeat infringer, I'll be okay. Wrong! You'll still get hit with this because they, because if you pirate for too long, you know, an hour, you'll get two per hour. Um on average is what they normally average at to where single offenders get hit as repeat offenders very very quickly and and i'm talking about in a matter of an hour or two you instantly become a repeat offender because you downloaded a hack copy of half-life 4 and here, uh, here and here's the thing it to, to 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 make a long story short you'll get a pop-up at first that you can click through it's basically warning you hey this is part of content you should be doing that but if you are a repeat offender, which, as Bob has pointed out, you're, you're, you're then pretty much they clear. shut down your internet via your ISP, physically and, block it, and you're like, okay, so how do I get rid of this? How, tell us, tell us how to fix it. Easy, you give them money, admitting guilt, and they can they can use that as evidence to get hit you with a bigger suit later down the line, and you're boned. How do you get around this? You may be asking. Easy, use the v VPN or a DNS server. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Kind of yes. So, so again, to be very clear, guys, basically what it is 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 they're they're trying to shift gears from sending out notices to you, trying to basically railroad you to pay cash. They're trying to work with ISPs to get them to basically report you, so that they can put this little splash screen up warning you. And then at some point, they basically hijack your browser, so that it, not just you know, not just if you go to an offending site, but if you open your browser and go to anywhere, Facebook, Google, whatever, instead you'll be met with a splash screen that basically says. Sorry, you're a repeat offender, and until you pay us for a, a fine, you can't browse anywhere. That's now it. Here's, you're done. Now, now, here's the one thing that's just really kind of hinky about the whole thing. Um, let's say Jester here is the ISP, right? Rights Corp goes to Jester, and I'm the pirate in this situation. And he's like, hey, who, who's doing this? And they're like, well, it's Ziploc Bob. And, and I find out that he ratted me out and you'd think I wouldn't be able to do anything to him because he's supposed to tell me when, tell them when I'm doing something legal. Actually, no, I can sue them, I can sue him, and everybody loses money except for me, and I can get, and at that point, part of my lawsuit, and my suit, I would just get free internet from life from them. Yeah, if it if only worked out of way. Problem is, I can't pay for a lot of lawyers. So yeah, it, 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 just it, before anybody starts, you know, lighting the hair on fire, running around screaming, just so you know, ISPs really have not gotten on board with this so far. It, it's been an uphill battle for these guys, and I hope they continue that way. The fact that it matters, this is my speculation. I think the ISPs know that there's a large portion of it technically infringed in some way, whether it be minor or major. We don't realize it because we'll, you know, and t technically, theoretically, some copying of a picture. Doing it out of ignorance. Yeah, you, you, you copy a photo from a Google search. And you paste it into Facebook under your feed without giving absolution or anything like that. That technically can qualify. So just, again, the point is, it isn't happening yet. But just be advised because if this kind of thing actually did go through, it could get ugly really, really quickly. So just, I, want, I wanted to put that out there. Yeah. Um, on, on the media front, this is going to be a real quick one here. Preview. <laughs> A preview for uh, Rebel One is out. You can go over to YouTube and check it out. It it is an interesting preview. I'm kind of looking forward to it. Um, I'll be honest with you. I'm I, I I do enjoy Star Wars. I grew up with Star Wars. Um, if I had to pick between Star Wars and Star Trek. I pick pick Star Trek because my dad was a, uh, was a Trekkie and and that's kind of way. And and, and 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 to be further honest, I wasn't really all that impressed with the newest one. Sorry. Yeah. But nonetheless, uh, go hey, check it out. I'm just glad it didn't have Jar Jar. It's an improvement due to that alone. Uh, this, there's actually speculation that he was in it. But anyways, I, oh, uh, I don't. <laughs> anyways, um, the the uh, along with the uh, the the trailer release, there were uh, a lot of uh, confirmed uh, confirmations regarding characters in the movie, as well as people playing the characters, including was it. Uh, Jen Eros, I, I, I'm not saying this right at all. Basically, the main character you see ring around here. So, go over, check it out. It's worth seeing. It, it actually gets me a little excited, which is 
saying a lot because most of the time I've been looking at this going, meh. So whatever. Anyways, guys, I'm going to take a quick, take a quick break here. I'm going to step away from from the news and whatnots, uh, and of course go into our calendar here and talk about the wonderful history. Just so you guys are informed, uh, on April 4th in 1975, this little company incorporated called Microsoft. So I didn't incorporate; they formed. Have you ever heard of Microsoft? And like, God, what rock do you live under? <laughs> and can I move in with you? <laughs> <laughs> If ignorance is bliss, you must be a very, very happy person. <laughs> it's like, are you, how enlightened are you at this point? Yes. In addition to uh, Microsoft forming in 1975, and April 6, not on April 6, 1992, Microsoft released Windows 3.1, which was actually the first GUI operating system I personally ran into. Microsoft Soft released the operation system using IBM and IBM compatible PCs with a graphical user interface basically where you have the mouse and you have things that you can click and all that good stuff versus using a DOS command line and I'll tell you right now it's like replaced go 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 to YouTube and look up Microsoft 3.1 so you can actually see some actual use of that interface it's rough archaic by it's rough standard. now but it was revolutionary at the time. It was. No, to be clear, Apple actually had a GUI before this. And a matter of fact, Apple actually sued Microsoft because of this. Uh, but the 3.1 was was a uh, a landmark in uh in, in Microsoft's legacy uh, of operating systems because 3.1 was the second iteration, basically. The one 1 1.0 was the first, but 3.1 was the first uh started to be widely used GUI interface by Microsoft. It had a lot of new capacities uh, that didn't that the one point didn't have, including build overlap windows and things like that. So it, it, it's kind of a landmark. Ironically, that that's not what really got it going, though. When you look into the history of it, what really got it going is that there was a a better um, operating system at the time that was a major competitor in the business sphere, but it had a bunch of features that it didn't need. And you couldn't get a scaled down version for a cheaper price, but with Windows you could. So they yep. just exploded in the offices everywhere. And yeah, that's a good point. And I, I want—I don't want to dwell on this too long here, but it's a good point. One thing that yeah. worth pointing it out. It only is, retailed at one hundred and fifty. Another one ranged at about six hundred dollars. Yeah. Pop. This this one was was a big deal because this actually was the, was the the first time that Microsoft kind of did a little bit of a pivot in a sense where. They were gearing towards Bill Gates' uh, uh, dream or goal of putting it in every home. It wasn't just trying to be business. It was trying to be mass adoption. So this really did it a long, long ways the right way. Anyways, um, that, that's a little bit of history for you guys. We actually don't have any birthdays uh, this week. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> but we do have some events. I have one of my sisters born on the 10th, and that's it. <laughs> there you go. Happy birthday, so Bob's sister. Yeah, happy birthday, Ashley. <laughs> or was it uh, Amber? I have four of them. I get so confused. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, for events, there's a lot of uh, lot of events. Too many to list this time, but what I am going to point out is on the Bar Rocket group, we do have a lot of uh, events and whatnots all the time. And actually, coming up this week, uh, Linz, our illustrious leader, is actually going to be hosting Insurgency. So if you have the game and want to join us, I definitely encourage you to head over to uh, Bar Rocket Gaming and uh, definitely check that out because it, it, I've watched uh, the last videos they did. It's a lot of fun, um, and uh, yeah, it's definitely worth uh, picking up. I'm gonna take a quick, uh, quick break here, guys, and uh, talk about uh, actually uh, Ball Rocket this time. Um, again, we, we I know I've said this many times before, but I always want to keep hammering on it. We are an incredible group of people. We have people across the board from just people who just game to people who do a lot of really great things from content creators like myself and Bob, the people who do all kind of art and media, music, you name it. We are a great collective of people. You can see there's a lot of activities, a lot of events that go on, a lot of get-togethers of all types. If you're looking for some place to, to, to hang out and have a good time with, I cannot recommend this group enough. Yes, I'm technically biased, but nevertheless, I've been in a lot of different groups and some are good, some are really, really bad. Um, but we are a bunch of, of, of <laughs> twisted people. <laughs> we have a good time. So I, I, I can't complain too much. So 
definitely, you know, head over to ballrackgaming.com. Check us out. Feel free to sign up. Where we are a wonderful collective of people, you know, it literally is just a it is a a portal to have a good time at. And the other thing I want to point out too, and this is a big thing, some people don't quite grasp. We are not like a gaming guild. We're, we, it, it's not like, well, I'm already part of a guild. That's fine. We have a lot of people here that are part of the iCraft server. We have the entirety of the Bar, uh, Bridge Street Mining Corporation that are actually a part of Bar Rocket Gaming. We are not just individuals, we are entities, we are collectives, we are groups. So it is a great place to come to, to, to meet new people, to advertise in terms of if you have events, if you're looking for people, you're welcome to come here and let us know. We have a lot of people that may be looking for uh, a, a world of uh, uh, tanks group to be with or to create your own. So definitely come by and check us out. There's a lot of good stuff going on. We have new stuff coming down the pipe, including a new website. So uh, stay tuned. At and we will uh, definitely uh, have a lot more stuff coming up. So always, always, always check there. And of course, as always, guys, uh, definitely, definitely feel free to leave feedback and, and in every sort of way. Uh, I want to go ahead and and again switch gears and go ahead and dive into the main topic. I know, as always, we keep running long on on the news, and I apologize. Yeah. Which um, we'll, we'll try to. We're th already 13 minutes away from the hour mark, so we're missing that Oops. again. Oops. Yeah. Dark. Well, you know, it, it, it's Blame it's it's. It it's life. It's okay. You know, we'll try. I, 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 I want to try to keep us in the in the, in the hour-ish markers because people tend to kind of get a little loopy-eyed afterwards. But this is a really good topic. We talked about this is the the the, the psychology of of basically buying the right game for you. And and, and the preface is the reason why I say that is because you'll see a lot of good games out there. You saw the BAFTA, and all, all the uh, the awards got given to a lot of good games, and they are good games. But there's games that are really popular, like Firewatch. That I have got absolutely no interest in. And it's not because the game sucks in any way. It's just, it's not my kind of game. It doesn't fit my perspective. And the hey, best... Uh, the, uh -huh, uh -huh. Can you give me about five minutes? E? It's a little bit of an emergency because I'm about to piss myself. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Take <laughs> off, man. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll lead us in. I'll give him up the speed here. And we'll go from there. <laughs> This yeah. is the second time we have somebody that has a problem. <laughs> yeah, well, I drank a can of water beforehand, and I'm like, oh, I gotta go. <laughs> I discreetly messaged you inside. <laughs> this guy is, did not read that shit at all. <laughs> so I was trying to make it to where you could just edit around it. Oh, no. They're, they're, this is all live, man. Anyways, Fuck guys. <laughs> yeah. Before, so yeah, I didn't think it was going to take that long, and all of a sudden, it's like, oh, crap, this just hit my bladder. Crap. <laughs> Go. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys. So basically, uh, this this is not new. This is nothing nothing that's uh, that, that I'm I'm coming up with or any kind of revelation I've had. This is actually uh, a known entity, and basically what it's based off of is uh, Bartle's taxonomy. And to give you kind of a, a quick rundown, Bartle's taxonomy. Well, first one back up. Bartle. <laughs> Bartle. Uh, Richard Bartle was actually one of the first creators of a MUD, which is a uh, um, basically a command line uh, MMO in a sense. Think of like WoW, but text based. I know it sounds kind of weird, but this is where they started. I used to play on a MUD called EOTL, and it was a text based. You you know you hit N to go north, W to go west, like Zork. If anybody's ever been around long to play Zork, that's the same kind of concept. But this was online. You actually play with other people. You had PvP. I've got Siri pestering me again <laughs> i apologize um but basically the idea is that you have an online game now bardo went on uh to uh kind of start trying to figure out from making this game he actually wanted to understand <sighs> the people God, this is too damn funny he wanted to go on and actually uh understand the people playing the game and he noticed that different people play the game for different reasons and what he ended up mm -hmm. ultimately coming up with is a basic graph that gives you an idea of, of the four basic characteristics of people in games. And what he has it broke down to is socializers, killers, explorers, and achievers. Now, basically, what this is, is um, a, basic, a, a basic rundown of where people sit. Now, just like with uh, any kind of graph here, this is not, you're, you're not an extreme of anything. But the idea is, you, based on how people respond to games 
when you interview them and, and ask them what's going on and what they enjoy about it, you can actually peg somebody, put a dot on this graph somewhere that gives you an idea of what kind of person they are. Socializers are our interaction with players. These are people that get onto these massive online games and their big shtick is chatting with other people. I mean, and I, I've mm -hmm. seen the extremes of this. The, 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 the absolute extreme of the socializer are those people that are level five, have been playing the game for a year, and it's pretty much because all they want to do is log in and chat with people. It basically it, or it, uh, role players. Exactly. They're, that's another extreme to it. They're as there well. for the social aspect to chat to, to, to and and socialize and have a good time. Killers are people that act on other players. These are the PvP. guys. Exactly. These are the guys that are really big into PvP. People who go into the PvP arenas and wow, this is this is them. They're the killers. They're the guys that mm -hmm. they get their rocks off on killing other people. Yeah. And if and if you're like, oh, I don't play MMOs, what's a good example of a killer in that? Okay, uh, Call of Duty Deathmatch. It's still an online game, and again, and, and to be very clear, this yeah. is not this is not player versus environment. This is not you playing a single player game and killing mobs. This is you going after other players. There's a psychology, there's a whole depth that we won't even have time to get into. But basically, yeah. there's a different way your brain reacts. Well, we to... kind of will, but it's but not. Oh, yeah, but I'm, I'm, talking, about, I'm, talking, about, I'm talking about it. Dominance, and we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, it, it basically, when, when you look at the human brain, the way people react when they basically hunt and kill players versus environment is different. There's a different way their brain responds. So that's killers. Explorers. These are the guys that interact with the world. Now, these are the guys that are uh, ones who go out and kill mobs, but also the people that like to uh, find the cool, interesting stuff that the developers might have hidden. Exactly. They're ones that will climb the, the highest mountain, find that way to jump up the, the side of a hill cliff and get over the boundary wall, the invisible boundary wall to find new places. They're the yeah. ones that like to find those things that have never been seen before. And we or have... Ways to break the game. Exactly. <laughs> and then last but uh, not least, we have the Achievers. And the Achievers, this is one that anybody might be able to pick up on very quickly. The Achievers are actually the classification that's most commonly uh, gone after in mobile gaming. These are the people that if you give them, you know... The tin star, the iron star, the bronze star, the 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 silver star, the gold star, the platinum star, the the zirconium encrusted star. These are the people that just that's their narrow focus. They just they want to have the best of the best of the best achievements in everything. Or or even in a different light, let's say if you're playing a uh, game and there's like this, and like there's a meta narrative in the game towards like everybody's like, yeah, you have to do this certain thing to get this one weapon and it's one of the best weapons in the game they're going to do fight this crazy side boss who's crazy hard just because they want the bragging rights exactly so those they want to say that they conquered this game where it's like killers want to conquer other players and assert their dominance achievers want to assert their dominance but not over other players but over the world so that that's basically what it boils down to so that's that's the basic concept uh, of Barlow's taxonomy, and this is this is like like, like uh, okay whatever. But this is important for game developers, game designers, because everybody know anybody who designs games in any any facet knows this graph because it's very important when you're creating a game. You are going to create a game that it that is going to cater to a segment of this population or all of them, in some cases. Yeah, um, I mean, you have to have a balance because there's actually well, we're not going to get into yes. this. We're not going to get into a huge thing, but let's say if you are making an MMO, they actually have to figure out a way to like how like like they'll sometimes the reasons why they change the game is the game that they made is not the game they want to make. So they're, as far as like dynamics, the players playing it, so it's like, well, we want more of more killer archetypes, but because we want more PvP, mm -hmm. but. How now, do you get more killers? Incentivize PvP play. How do you get more socializers? De-incentivize PvP play because the more killers you get, the less socializers you get because it's hard to socialize when you're constantly ah, getting one-shotted. Yes, and that and this is the important thing. Again, this is this is you know again game developers will go back to this, and as Bob said, th this is a reference point to figure out how to balance things. And what's important about this is these different categories play off each other. And to that point, I I, I, I need to pull up the, uh, the the demographic again so I understand it. Basically, certain ones prey off of each other. So, for example, killers killers will be very very keen 
and want to have a lot of achievers and explorers because they're the people that can knock down a peg. You keep yeah. an achiever from achieving that goal. You can knock down an explorer. Not so much. I mean, they're not going to be as great as an achiever, but, yeah. you know, but socializers. They're, they're fodder. Socializers yeah, socializers, they don't are... care. Killers hate socializers. If you have a game that is just filled with socialization, killers aren't going to be there because they don't like it. So everyone plays off each other. It's a really interesting dynamic how they'll work. If you have a game that's failing a particular segment, you learn how to not address that segment directly, but you address other segments. So if, if killers are weak and you want to have more killers, you don't create more PvP zones. You create more incentive for the achievers to show up because that's the fodder the killers want. Yeah. So this is this is the basic concept. And I know this from a personal standpoint because I helped develop the uh, the mod pack for Ball Rocket's um, Cherry Bomb server. Mm -hmm. And even before I even realized this this graph existed, I was uh, trying to wrap my head around this. We have a lot of, of diverse people in this group. Oh, you poor, poor thing. Oh, it's fun. <laughs> well, the thing, too, is bear in mind, too, is not every game is going to have this perfect square of hitting everything. Some game MMOs actually are, are, are a special like, case because MMOs are very, they try to be very well-rounded, whereas, like, CSGO is going to be very much focused on the killer and the achiever aspect. They have almost no socialization and no exploration at all. The so best this... way for like someone who is in the game designer to look at is like, oh, where where does this game fit or where do I fit? And it, it's like, um, remember those X and Y charts that you did in geometry class back in the day and you yep. plot out this thing? The, imagine that's what this is. Um, if you could, could you bring the really complex looking one up for the viewers? Certainly. Like, because... Here you'll see like all sorts of crazy things, and it's got stuff that we're not even going to talk about, like you know the Keller, the Keller's um, psychological tests and all that stuff. No, 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 we're not getting all that. <laughs> but like for me, yes, I'm an achiever. I like 100% in games, and I like a challenge. But I'm not someone to where, and also, but also like socializing and rationalizing, and socializing and exploring to where. Yep. I lean more towards what they'd call manager here because I don't care for PvP almost at all. But these three things I really gravitate towards, but more towards single player play. But when I do have multiplayer, I do really enjoy it. That's interesting because I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I, 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 I am a, kind of an achiever, but I'm also kind of a leader and I'm an explorer. And I, I do a lot of socializing. So yeah, I, I would definitely put myself around the, uh, the manager aspect of it. So... Yeah. And, you know, it, it all depends on where you are. And yes, of course, they had to put hardcore and casual because, you know, there's that old dichotomy in games. Freaking casuals. Man, you're just too hard. You're a hardcore gamer. Get a life. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Speaking of interesting, you know, arguments and let's go with interesting questions. And don't there will be some psychology basics in it here. But don't worry, you don't have to take out a $50,000 student loan for this. <laughs> we would not do that to you, viewers. Uh, so, why do you play games? And yes, viewers, you can pause, pause the video and play the video to kind of play it along and actually give it some honest thought. Jester, why do you play games? Like, so for me, for me, thinking simple. about it, it, it it's funny because I, I, I have to think. Um, it, it's it's released and laid back, but it's social. It's, it's, it's a lot of... I, I think it's actually more social... I realize sometimes, and that's you know, it's like with creating the ball rock gaming group, it's right man, it's helpful with people to have fun and do things, but it's also uh, kind of to achieve goals to make something happen, yeah. So, would you say that you uh, you like to play with friends or even strangers that you've never met before? Absolutely, and do you play games because you're good at them? No, <laughs> I play games because <laughs> they're fun. I mean, but, you know, you get enjoyment because you actually have some proficiency at them, right? I, 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 I enjoy playing games that I can gain proficiency at. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. And you like having that sort of challenge for it. Like, you push yourself and you get a little bit better. And exactly. You get bit. Okay. So, now we're going to talk about Maslow's Hierarchy and Eves and why I ask those questions. Maslow's Hierarchy and Easers, this guy way, way, way back in the day. I'm not giving dates and stuff because it's superfluous. 1943. Um, <laughs> what? It's 1943. Yeah, again, it's superfluous. Um, 
it's just how it works is it's, as you viewers probably can see now is that, that it's a food pyramid but instead of food groups bread bread uh meat veg all that good stuff you have these weird words and what are these weird words well physiological let's put that in english food water um clothing to where you don't freeze yourself to death basic necessities that, for life you know basic necessities for your body to keep going okay safety law and order being part not being part of a group as in for like the camaraderie of it but for the fact that a group safer stuff like that that belongs in safety that has nothing at all to do, and that's why I glanced over it, and it's a horrible simplification, but again, as not, we're already <laughs> running long enough. But let's talk about, about the other three. Love and belonging. Okay, what's... So, you said you like to socialize. Mm -hmm. So, so with love and belonging, it's defined as, like, friendship, intimacy, love, love and affection, and blah, blah, blah. How does that relate to you? It's a, it's a big thing. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm a social person, so finding a group that I fit in with and feel comfortable with is, is important. I enjoy myself more, and I enjoy the game more mm -hmm. when I'm around people that I feel comfortable and confident with. Yeah, and see, um, even killers get benefits from this, and that's the one that, everybody, that when I bring this up, they're like, what? It's like, yeah, because you have to have someone that even have friendly competition with. Mm -hmm. You know? you know, to where they push each other to get better, and it's that sort of, like, you know, they're friends, but they're constantly competing. You know, it's just their form of play. Yep. And that's a way of uh, friendship. It's like brothers who razz on each other all the time. It's just how it works. Pardon me. But from there we go into esteem. Esteem is about a mastery of a skill self-independence, dominance. So there's definitely the killers again. Mm -hmm. And prestige. There's your achievers. Gotcha. Achievers. Um, and even sometimes the explorers because it's like I was able to see this first when it was something new. You know, this part of the map. You know? Or, you know, this holiday event. Because that's also why they do those. It's not just to add buffer game, mini game game contents to give the explorers more crap to explore so they don't get bored and leave and go on to the next game. And, you know, special social events like gift giving, you know, if you're known as being a gift giver in social circles, you tend to get more respect and you kind of get more self-respect within the group. You know, it's like, yes, I I am worthwhile. I am doing something in this group because I am, you know, I'm the best PvP -er in our group. I'm the, you know, I'm the guy that actually figured out how how to get around this game breaking breaking bug. I'm the guy that showed everybody uh, shows the newbies the cool areas to go to. That's great for level grinding. Or I'm the guy that helps or make sure it gives them like stuff that's a little bit better than starting equipment that they can equip almost right away. Okay. You know. You know. And the last one is self-actualization, and that's a mouthful. So let's call it what it really is. It's personal potential. It's that ability to seek out personal growth and self-identify. Gotcha. Um, like Warp Jester, it's literally in your name, who you are. You're Warp Jester. That's not just who you are, but how you identify yourself, because it's a name that you gave yourself, much like Ziploc Bob is for me. It's a me, a Mario. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I mean, and it's basically works like, you know, this is basically, it's like, hey, you're an RPG character. You aren't happy until you've pressed all your limits and all your stats are maxed out. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. But, you know, it's like when the killer gets better PvP gear and gets and learns better tactics or the achiever you know, finally gets that achievement that required them to learn a whole new style of play in like a pacifist run. Mm -hmm. Or the explorers having having to learn how to get to jump on that nook, that cranny, that thing, to get to that chest that was up there that they didn't even know that was up on that mountain because they just climbed that mountain because of there. Or that socializer becoming a guild leader. 
There you go. I mean, dependent on how, like, that's how these get, that's kind of the why, but, okay, how does this help me buy a better game? Well, you just have to take some self-reflection going, okay, where do I kind of fit on this graph, and what games do I consume that actually help me here? Um, like me, I'm not the killer type, so there goes most first-person shooters because they focus mainly on multiplayer, and that's not my thing. But I do like social uh, social games, so and I like seeing new, interesting places. So like uh, the game you, games you got me turned on to World of Warships fits just fine for me. Mm -hmm. And any money I invest in that game because it is free to pay. But like, let's say if it's a sixty dollars retail game, right? It, it's that, a fun game. That would not be a waste of money for me because it helps my needs. Needs both with all, you know, with learning, you know, with getting my steam, steam up in the mm -hmm. game, becoming part of the group, and actually defining myself within that group. Now we know exactly what it is that uh, drives Bob. Now, again, Guys, the, the the point of this is, is to kind of make you understand a little bit of, of the, how the sausage is made, so to speak, when it comes to game creation. But this yeah. is important because you, as a as a as a end user, so to speak, as a gamer, you can use this 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 type of knowledge both for Bartle's uh, graph as well as uh, uh, the hierarchy here, because we understand and kind of you know, literally sit down and kind of ask yourself these questions that Bob asked me. It helps you understand what drives you, what makes it interesting. And when you do that, it allows you to figure out what kind of games are going to be more interesting to you. And and it, it seems kind of funny. It's like, well, I can look up reviews or I can watch some gameplay video. You can. But I'll tell you, I've seen games that, like um, Fallout, yeah, for example. Fallout's fun. It looks great. But it's not a game I'm going to buy. It has no social. Or here's one for you. They're like, wow. Don't get me wrong. Well, I would probably like well now, but when I bought it back in the day, I wasn't I that, that type you. of person. Say again. I won't hold that against you. Yeah. <laughs> when I bought it back in the day, I hated it because I wasn't the same person then that I am now. And mm -hmm. the internet was a way different place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Forever changing. And yeah, but you know, I was like, that would have been my, that was like my first eye. And I wasn't used to socializing. I wasn't used to multiplayer. I grew yeah. up in single player games and that just wasn't my jam. So I wasted money on WoW because well, it was the next big thing and I knew it was a good game. And it is, is a good game from a critical point of view. But was it a game that I would enjoy? No, not at that time. Now, not quite a bit. But nonetheless, like I said, guys, you, you, can, you can take away from this, even even on the most basic, just as you can, you know, borrow's graph, um, you get a basic understanding. And again, when you think about, take any, take, take a minute here, pick any game. It can be, you know, it, 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 it can be WoW, it can be Fallout, it can be uh, a, a mobile game, whatever. It just can for, be just, Undertale, it doesn't matter. Yeah, pick any game and, and just for a fun thought experiment, Look at Barlow's graph and figure out where the point lies in that game. It's not just where the players fit on the graph. It's where the games fit. Where Where is the highlight point of it? And kind of figure out, look at the games you like. See where those dots line up on that graph. And you'll have a basic understanding of the kind of games you're into, so to speak. And you'll get a better, kind of a, a better feel for what you're into. And you might actually be able to kind of suss out games coming up that might be more interesting to you than, than you really thought. So if you take it from the from the granted point, there you go. Now uh that said, you know, if you want to dive into it deeper, the the links to uh these two pages here regarding uh Bartle and regarding uh the 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 uh Matt hierarchy. Love. Yeah, my love uh, hierarchy. They're great reads. I really encourage it. Matter of fact the uh uh Madlov has actually a, a, a video that will kind of explain it to you, um, so you get a better feel for it if you'd like. There's a ton of good things out there. Um, uh, extra credits, we've brought up a, a lot of times. Extra credits, uh, YouTube site, they actually yeah. do a, a good segment on Bartle's Taxonomy, and they explain the interaction of the killers and the achievers with each other and so on. 
Like, and if you want a good um, gaming version for the Maslov stuff, uh, Matt, Matthew Patrick, uh, the game theory guy, has a very old one on this that still holds true. It's just that those two things combined hasn't really been done before. So, so something that I've looked into. And we'll try to get those notes all down. Uh, or links in the notes below. And I'm sorry I'm behind on getting the notes up on the forums. I will get in there as soon as I can, guys. I'm really sorry. Nonetheless, yeah. we got to get things wrapped up here. But uh, uh, I hope you guys get to take away something good from this. Bob brought this up, and I absolutely love the idea of it because I could at least speak to half of it in terms of Bartle. And Bob gave me – you gave me a lot of good knowledge here, man. I, I had no idea – about this hierarchy and as soon as you start talking about it, explaining it i have a whole new appreciation for the kind of intricacies and the depths and the levels of it and it's really really neat because you can go kind of the extremes of where everything fits so thank you so much for that oh thank you just for having me here i really do appreciate it so and as always guys if you have any questions comments curiosities feel free to pop over to ballworkgaming.com you can go into the forum we have a section specifically for the podcast you can see uh, you know, leave notes, comments. You can see the 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 show notes when I finally get them up there. Um, you can see the guest host lineup coming up. Um, so you can always go there and check things out. And of course, uh, you know, for Ball Rock in general, we do have a YouTube channel. Um, but more importantly, Bob has a YouTube channel. He doesn't just do talk shows. No, no, he plays games. Yeah, and I play the type of games that induce rage. That way I don't actually get ticked off that much in real life because I got all the hate out of me. I, I uh, have I have zero no recently zero recently got me devil daggers. I don't know yeah. how you could possibly want to do this game. Uh I got the sixty seconds, so that's better than my first time at something else. If if you guys haven't seen this game, head on over to uh to Bob's channel, check this out. It is. There's a lot of swearing. <laughs> it is a hyper twitchy, spazzy, rage inducing hell hole of a game that. Again, it's Quake Two as a bullet hell. Look, look, look at your Bartos taxonomy graph and see where this thing sits and see if it really is a game for you. Because I will tell you, based on the graph, I would touch this with a ten foot pole. This is exclusively for achievers and no one else. It really is. It really, really is. Uh, matter of fact, this is actually a good example of the extreme of that. What else are you playing on, uh, or what else are you doing in general? Oh, uh, honestly, I just got through with a move, and right now I'm trying to get my ducks in a row, so to speak. So I'm currently seeking people to help me with my sequel situation podcast. So it's like, and what the podcast is going to be all about is stuff we just talked about, but not just in psychology and sociology because I actually do have a history in game design. I went to school for it. I just never went into industry because it sounded fun at the time until I realized how involved it was. And I just <laughs> know. <laughs> so to, to that end, though, let's see you guys. Um, yeah. um, definitely check him out. He's got a YouTube channel. He's got uh, Twitter, which is Ziploc Bob. Um, he also is, again, a, a host on uh, Minus the Rumors, which is another great news podcast i definitely encourage you to check out and they actually do live streaming every is it thursday nights yeah we live stream games on mondays and live stream the actual show on thursdays on mondays is 8 p 8 p.m eastern standard time so do the math sorry folks but i don't know every but i'm not going to list off every time, <laughs> time there is and it's 9 p.m eastern standard on thursdays so if you want to watch us live that's fine if you can't reach us that's fine. You can just ca catch it over on the YouTube channel because we archive everything over there. Not so much with the uh, with the uh, gaming stuff because sometimes I get hyper with Warp Jester and we're super PG. And <laughs> I think it, we take it in five minutes. <laughs> but yeah, like, that's nope, that's not that. Yeah, we're just gonna let Twitch delete this on its yep. own eventually, and no. <laughs> <laughs> So definitely, uh, definitely check that one out. And of course, like I said, uh, Bob has uh, sequel syndrome that he's looking for people on. So if you want to get in contact with Bob, what's the best way to get a hold of you if they're interested? I want to get honestly, to know you. just give me just give me a DM on YouTube, and that is the best way because I don't get flooded yet. But I also have an email. Um, Jesus, <laughs> uh, give me half a second because I wasn't even planning on this. He's got Twitter. He's got <laughs> YouTube. I got you can also find them on Ball Rocket Gaming. And again, I'm in the Bottle Rocket Gaming Discord. So if you're a Bottle Rocketeer, 
bang me. <laughs> Finally, somebody uses it. <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, I myself am, uh, as always, uh, found on, on multiple YouTube channels. I, I do have a regular one, just, just Warp Jester. I do I try to do uh, kind of soapboxes, uh, opinion pieces, reviews, etc., etc., etc. But my Warp Jester gaming account is one where I do a lot of gameplay. I do have uh, Rocket League coming up again. Again, they're outdated, but I'm getting them up there. I have more content coming. I just recorded a whole bunch of... Um, of uh, ships with uh, Bob and Watwake, and we actually met somebody new in ships. I've actually started to uh, post a link to our Discord voice chat. It's actually a web-based voice chat. No install required. You just hit the link. You join the chat. You're more than welcome to hang out with us if you like. So if you happen to see me in a game, and you see that link go up, feel free to join us. We always love, love having you. Speaking of which, as I said, Bauer Gaming, as we said, beautiful, wonderful gaming group. Cannot encourage you enough to head over there. Also, make sure you hit our YouTube channel, we do put up all of our podcasts here as well as our weekly roundups where Dude Caller gives you a weekly rundown of all things going on with all the different uh, Bottle Rocket uh, YouTubers and you can kind of get highlights of what's been going on with them. And as I said before, if you're willing and able, pitching a few dollars our way really helps us out. As I said before, we do try to cover the basic cause like the servers and, the, and, and whatnot to keep the lights on, so to speak. If we get any surplus uh, funding in, we use it, we, we give it out to all of the YouTubers and gamers and people we have in our group to help them out. Everything from doing events to special gifts and what else can do to help them along the way. So really cannot thank you enough ahead of time. Definitely hang over there. And Bob, thank you again so much for joining me, man. I really appreciate it. Oh, this was a complete treat. Um, the honor is all mine, and I'm not doing the white knighting thing on YouTube. Honestly, this is the best fun I've had since the yeah. move, which has been really stressful. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have absolute blast, man. I really appreciate it, and I'm sure we'll have Bob back on again sometime soon. Here, uh, we don't have anybody lined up for next week just yet. Uh, but that said, I uh, I need to talk to Seshi because I know we're going to be doing the next uh, segment of our uh, uh, sound in gaming. And we're going to oh, be diving God, into I just watched the part one, and I'm ecstatically waiting for part two so tell her that's I cool i learned that. a lot in that so we'll be on part oh, two yeah. and i believe uh, we start diving into the basics of uh the basic music they had so that would be i want to hear chip tunes dang it <laughs> <laughs> so anyways guys as always i appreciate the time and uh if you have any questions comments curiosities let us know and uh i'll catch you next time bye peace